So I'm Carlisle Curbo. And I'm Sloan Curbo. Um, our son Cloud is six and he has crabby disease. It was uh, shortly before his third birthday. Um, we just kind of started noticing a little change in his gait, you know, just walking a little funny. At first we thought it was just, you know, maybe pigeon toed or something like that, but the more we watched it, it just kind of got worse and worse. Right before his third birthday, he was at school and the fire trucks were there for all the kids to see and he just refused. Luckily, we were very able to very quickly get him into Children's in Atlanta to see a neurologist up there. We did tests um, and whenever we got through with those tests, he gave us an initial diagnosis of Jillian Barre. So he was like, come home, um, do some PT, come back in a few weeks, we'll kind of reassess then. And we did probably like two or three weeks of physical therapy um, and he wasn't getting any better, he was actually getting worse. So we called back to the neurologist, got him back up there. Um, and actually when we went back up there, we thought we were going for just an appointment and we were actually admitted to the hospital for about two weeks, two and a half weeks, um, while we waited for a diagnosis. On August the 9th of 2019, um, we were called into a little bitty conference room and they sat us down and, and I will never forget the look on the doctor's face. We instantly knew something was wrong. I mean, you could just, you could see it on their face. Cloud has tested positive for crab A disease. Um, he would be the late onset. I just remember sitting there and I heard the words, but it didn't register. And I think I remember saying like, are you sure? Like. Are you sure? And she's like, yeah, we're, we're very positive. Um, and it was just overwhelming. It was very overwhelming. I'm Breland. I'm Coven Ridge's mom. I'm Andy and I'm the dad. And I'm Ridge and the sister. And this is Miss Cove. When she was born, she was perfect. About four or five months, she started having reflux. And I took her to the doctor. They're like, no, she should have already outgrown that. We had her in a bimbo seat one evening and I said, Andy, she looks a little wobbly. And I said, she's kind of leaning now. And she kept getting, and we'd hold her up and her head would kind of start to droop. So I'd take her and she would cry, um, but she had nine ear infections before she turned one. So I was like, well, it's another ear infection. And then she would jerk and cry, jerk like a muscle spasm. And so doctor to doctor to doctor, and he was like, oh no, she's fine. She might just be a little delayed. So I took her to my friend and I was like, while we're here at Choa, um, I want to take her by the ER to get them check her ears because she was crying. So the doctor there, an ER doctor, he said, um, I want to do a CAT scan on her. I'm not liking something I'm seeing. So he did a CAT scan and here I am at the ER just thinking I'm gonna go home. And um, he comes back and he says, we see white matter. And I was like, what? So I called Andy and a nurse comes in. She's like, don't look it up, but it's looking like crab bait. And I'm like, what? You know, and it's me and my mom. And she's like, oh, don't look it up. We don't know. And this is, I'm in the ER. And so I call Andy, I was like, get down here. So he comes down, it's like a nightmare to me. So he comes down and we're like, we're gonna admit her and do an MRI tomorrow. So we spend the night, they do the MRI the next morning, they come back and a doctor, I'll never forget, no heart. <laughs> she takes us in a little small room and says, you have a year with her take lots of pictures and I'm like curled up on him holding her he was at home I mean I was laying on the floor I was crying so crab a is a rare inherited disorder that affects the neurologic system and it's related to a enzyme deficiency uh, the enzyme is galactocerebrosidase but if you don't have that enzyme then there's toxic substances that build up that affect the nerves so it affects the brain it affects the peripheral nerves, and the disease is uh, devastating, progressive, and lethal. And most of the kids that are affected early in life die by the time they're two or three years old. 
And then we were immediately put into the hospital, started uh, chemo, started all the things to get ready for a transplant. He had his transplant on September 21st, 20th. 20th. So we were in Pittsburgh for about six months. Mm -hmm. About six months we were there. Um, when we were discharged from the hospital after his transplant, we stayed in the Ronald McDonald house um, so we could go back for appointments, um, check up with the BMT team. It's cloud six. Um, he is the joy of our world. He is amazing. Um, a typical day for Cloud is he gets up, he we do medicine, breakfast, um, you know, all the normal things that a typical six-year-old would do. We either get ready for whatever therapy he may have for the day, um, whether it's speech or occupational therapy, physical therapy. On the off days that we don't have therapy, um, we love to play dinosaurs, we love animals, um, we read 24-7. He loves to read, so that's a constant, you know. If we're not reading a book, he's listening to an audio book. We go outside, dig for dinosaurs outside, um, you know, whatever, whatever we can get into, Cloud is Cloud's the boss man. And then we get ready for our daddy to come home from work and we do all the normal things that a f normal family would do. When I asked for, is there a treatment option for Cove? They said, no, there is nothing. If we would have caught it at birth, um, there is a stem cell transplant she could have, but your state does not test for it. She'll be seven, July 10th. We just started in like with a physical therapist, occupational therapist, and we do that two to three times a week. So I get up, have my coffee, and I let her get up on her own. She is our boss, our little princess, and we get up, do our stretches, you know, put a big bow in her hair, get dressed. Um, we take a bath a couple days a week. He goes off to school. We watch cartoons, do our stretches. We have um, in-home therapy now because of the pandemic stuff. I'll take her down to my mom's. She, we pick him up at school. She goes everywhere. She's the little traveling gypsy. This baby has done it all. <laughs> what I've noticed is Cove really enjoys like swinging, swinging, any kind of swing, something that I guess that stimulates. She loves, it's kind of crazy, but she loves going to the automatic car washes. We'll open, not open the sunroof, but open the top where you can see. She loves it. If she's and a just day, the noise and the light, she, she, she's caught off guard and looking every direction. So I, I take her to the car wash with me. She loves the beach. We go to the beach every year. She goes deer hunting. She sits in a tree stand with me. She has little headphones on. Yeah, we have pictures of all that. She doesn't miss out on anything we do. She'll be laying on the couch, and then I'll just pick her up and like take her upstairs to clean my room. Or we'll go play the PlayStation, or just I'll just take her anywhere that I go. She just... He has a lot of buddies that, that have little sisters, little brothers, and what I like about it is he's never complained or say why can't my son accept her as she is and, and loves her for what she is and, and he, he's really shy but I, I mean he she means a lot to him and a key aspect of this is the early diagnosis and so uh, most of these patients if they're going to do reasonably well with transplant have been transplanted very early in life within a month or six weeks of, of age actually so there's almost no way to make that diagnosis that early unless they previously had an affected brother or sister or if it's picked up by newborn screening. So now we have the opportunity to potentially do gene therapy as interventions for, for Crab A. There's the potential that it will be not only safer than transplant but more effective because you could potentially deliver much more enzyme than we could deliver with, with transplant. My hope for Cove and my prayer for her is one day we will get a call and say, hey, come down here. Um, we've got some good news. We want to try this on her and we think it'll help, you know, whether it's to help her get stronger or um, to talk and be more vocal. That's just what I pray and believe that's, you know, going to happen one day. God puts everybody here and they have a purpose 
on this earth, and, and whether it's a year or a hundred years, and she definitely has a purpose, and you know, however long she's here, she's here. I may not be here tomorrow, and she may be here. I just look at it like she's touched a lot of lives. We're very hopeful that there'll be drugs that can cure it, you know, if not, we're just hopeful that there's new trials and drugs that can help him with his peripheral nerves and being more comfortable so maybe he could get some of his fine motor skills back. That's really what we're hoping for the most, you know. We've come to terms with that that may not happen. As long as Cloud is happy and enjoying life, that's, that's all we want.